Good morning, everyone. If I may ask, how many of you, this is your first time to Affiliate Summit? Wow. How many of you also the first time to Las Vegas? All right, that's going to be fun. How many of you are excited to uh, dig into the sessions, get into the meat market, wander through the exhibit hall, get to know a lot of good affiliate managers, and learn a little bit about uh, making some money with affiliate programs. This is, uh, to me this is a great topic. I actually stumbled into uh, affiliate marketing in 1999 and been full time at it ever since. And it's just done amazing things uh, in our business life and not only that in our personal life as well because we've managed to raise our kids while being at home. So it's been just a wonderful thing not to have to go off to work. And uh, we, we've really kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit for many years before that. But this one really kind of settled it all down because of uh, the internet. And the internet's just been this most amazing thing that we've, and I would imagine most of us in this room have, have watched grow. So my goal here today is to take you through some ideas and to show you some of the things that we're doing today. Today, the things that are working. Of course, like anything, it changes and it's evolved over the years and it's evolved a lot. And it's actually a very exciting time right now because there's just so many ways to do the business. That's also a big challenge because it can be confusing when you don't quite know which direction to go in. So today, I'm hoping to give you a bit of a game plan, at least our game plan, what we do, and to show you actual uh, sites and to take you through actual examples of things that uh, we've had the ability to do just recently. And how many of you have got a copy of the Feedfront magazine? probably received it in your bag. I was actually reading this one this morning. This is Jeremy Palmer. He's on page, uh, page three. And he says, stop building affiliate sites. And it's a great article. I'd encourage you to read it. I agree with him completely. And the very last three words on the page is build a brand. And this just came out, I guess they just released this with, with the summit this year. And we're actually going to take you through that. I'm going to give you a real good live example that you could probably model if you like because it works and it's a great way to go. It's long, it'll give you longevity in the business. You won't be in and out and up and down and all around the place. You'll actually be able to build some st stability in your business. Just a real quick background. I'm now the founder of the School of Internet Marketing. We're, uh, when I say we, my wife and Arlene and I are the host of the Affiliate Buzz on Webmaster Radio. We just celebrate our, celebrated our uh, 10th anniversary. We actually launched the Affiliate Buzz from Maui back in uh, 2002 in December. So it was literally a month ago when we recorded our first sessions. This was back in 99 when we were just first getting started when our kids were all still young and you can tell by the size of the monitor. Look at the monitor on that desk. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> It took everything I had to pick it up, so. 2005, I finally got my dream car in the garage after many years of uh, hard work. How many of you have had this question asked of you? And if you haven't, you're going to. What is it that you do online? What is it exactly that you do? And I remember my wife's, uh, Arlene's mother, asking her, what, what is he doing online? What's, what's, what's he doing? Is it legal? And... <laughs> Back in 99, it was a pretty interesting question because it was so new and it was dot, you know, pre-dot-com crash and it was kind of this new thing, the internet. It was, a lot of people were hyping it up as a fad and then dot-com crash came along, which kind of, oh, the bubble burst, I guess it's over. But in reality, what I've learned over the years is we are publishers. I own a publishing company and when somebody asks me what I do, I am I'm a publisher. It's very simple. And I publish podcasts and articles and ebooks and websites and newsletters and videos and a few other little things here and there, but generally those are the big ones. And then we monetize our publications through advertising. And affiliate marketing gives us the ability to hand select ads that we can embed 
within our publication. So it's a nice, neat little model. You can see just by the sheer number of people in the conference here that uh, it's very successful. And as you get out and, and you wander through the meat market and you get into the exhibit hall and you get to meet the affiliate managers, you'll find that it's a real business. It's lots of fun. You need to roll up your sleeves, get to work, work hard. But uh, it has this beautiful thing called recurring income built within it because once we get the sites in place and the traffic growing and the conversion rate under control, the revenue can continue on when you take a break or go on a holiday. And it's just a, it's just a great way to go. Before we get into showing you some sites and showing you some strategies, let's just kind of lay the groundwork a little bit. I know, how many sat through the newcomer session this morning? Okay, so you probably got a little piece of this, but let me give you a little bit more. So one of the things that I always wondered is who is everybody in the conference? And I figured, you know, who's who in the zoo? So if you take a look at, uh, there's really only a few industry players. Of course, we've got the advertisers. And when, as affiliates, you're going to find they're going to pursue you hot and heavy when you get into the meat market and the exhibit hall. Because they're here to find you. They're looking for affiliates who can send them traffic and who will build content around their products and services so that you can uh, actually earn a commission on that. So the advertisers may be a company such as Bluehost, where if you send somebody to Bluehost, they'll pay you 60 or $90 in commission, depending on the package. Could be somebody like the Land of Nod that sells all kinds of consumer goods for around the home. So they're the advertiser. These are the people who have something to sell. Number two is the publishers or the affiliates. In 2002, Commission Junction actually coined the term publishers uh, because up until that point, we'd all been called, we had all been called affiliates. And it was that I actually, when it, when it happened, I was like, I don't know, I think we're affiliates, but I actually agree. We are publishers because that's what we do. We publish. And we publish some, you know, you know if, we're, if we get good at it, we can publish great sites that are very highly trafficked, that are in high demand by consumers who are looking for products and services, and we can help them out. This is actually themaparty.com. It's an affiliate-based website. And he's actually a, a student of my boot camp. He's done very well with it. Maybe a, cert like, a site like Personal Checks Plus who will refer visitors over to a merchant who actually sells checks, and yes, people still use checks, amazingly enough. Or it could be maybe something around hobbies, and here's a, a gentleman named Jose Lanzo, and he, of course, reviews all kinds of remote control, in this particular case, aircraft, and refers them on to an advertiser who pays them a commission. The third player is the networks. This would be the sharesale.coms. This would be the uh, commission junctions, the link shares. You'll find all kinds of networks in the aisles as you wander through the various uh, booths in the meat market and in the uh, exhibit hall. And within these networks, you're going to find thousands, in some cases, of advertisers who are looking for, again, yourself. Share a sale is absolutely a top-notch network, and I'd highly recommend checking out their booth. Impact Radius is another amazing network that, uh, again, you're going to find all kinds of advertisers who are looking for you to represent their brands. Number four is a relatively new development, is the agencies. And these are the third party, or the uh, outsourced program managers, as they call it, that are hired by advertisers who want to outsource the management of their affiliate programs. So you're all, in addition to finding the networks, you're also going to be seeing all kinds of agencies, whether it would be all-inclusive marketing with Sarah Bundy out of Vancouver or Karen Garcia with GTO Management. You'll find all of these here. And one of the things that I would actually, if I could give you a little bit of homework, one of your goals, if I may say so, for those of you who are brand new, get to know some good affiliate managers. We're going to talk about that as we go through the presentation because these are the people that can really help you with their programs. Their whole purpose in life is to help affiliates get comfortable online, get their creative, their advertisers creative on your sites and in your publications, and then help you to make sure it's converting so you're earning commission. And then another one would be Matt Frary's Smarter Chaos, based out of Denver. Matt's also here. And so these are the networks. Industry player number five, of course, is the person with the credit card and the great customers that are looking to purchase these products and services. Without them, none of this would work. 
So with this in mind, we've got to figure out how are we going to choose an affiliate program? How are we going to choose a profitable product? Because you're going to find there's literally thousands and thousands, probably millions of products to choose from. How do you narrow it down to the handful that you may want to begin with? So let me share with you seven tips to choosing a, a profitable product. I think you'll find once you jot these down that uh, it'll really help you to identify and clear through a lot of the clutter. Number one is you want to find something that's got a decent price point. Of course, we get paid a percentage of the sale. We get paid commission, 8%, 10%, 12%, whatever it happens to be. So we want to find a product that's got a decent price point to it. So it might be, you know, something like a Bose radio, $350. And if you're earning a 10% commission, that would be about $35 a sale. Compared to a product that's selling for $20, you see you'd have to do a lot more volume of sales to get anywhere close to earning that kind of commission. So number one is a decent price point. Number two is preferably if you can find a well-known brand, and that Bose radio is a good example. Most people I would suspect have heard of the Bose brand. You see them in the airports with the headsets, they do a lot of advertising on TV, and they've been around forever. And it's a great product. Number three, and this is a biggie, you want to find a product that people are happy with. Nothing worse than sending a great visitor that you've brought to your site and worked hard to get a good targeted visitor on your site, and then you've referred them through to a merchant who has nothing but poor reviews. Your conversion rate, of course, will plummet on that. So if you can find merchants that have great reviews and happy campers, then uh, you're going to find that your conversion rate will be a lot better because they'll see that other people who have purchased the product are also very happy with their purchase. Number four is you want to find a reputable merchant, and here you're going to find hundreds of them within the uh, walls of this uh, hotel. Amazon, of course, is a great merchant. How many here have made a purchase from Amazon? Look at that. That's amazing. Amazon is a very reputable merchant. Do you have any problem pulling out your credit card? Are you, are you concerned about shopping with them? Probably not, because they're very reputable. They're very well known. Tip number five. Is there anybody looking for the product? Is there enough search volume to actually warrant you taking the time to build the content around that particular product? So you can use simple little tools. If you uh, want a little free keyword tool that we use, just go to just do a Google search for the Google AdWords keyword tool. This is it here. It's a free little tool. It's a great way to get started. It'll give you some ideas on if people are actually searching for the product. And number six, is there some competition? Of course, in some topics, credit cards, uh, satellite TV, there's some industries that are very, very competitive. And I'm not scared of competition, but you want to kind of rein it in a little bit. So you don't want to go after the top, top tier, especially when you're just beginning. But you want to go after kind of that mid-range, because you do want competition. You do want to see other people who are marketing this product, and you want to have a look through the search results to see if you think you can do a better job on creating the content that you're going to be competing with. Because Google does a really good job these days of determining what, which content is the best and which, uh, which of all of the content that's around that topic should be ranking. And we'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. So when you're looking for products and services, you know, just keep these tips in mind and you'll find that uh, it'll really give you a shortcut. And number seven is find a great affiliate manager. And I'll give you a little bit of a, a few clues on a, a few of them that I really love. SarahBundy.com, best of 2012. She was, uh, I think she's not, she just received an award last year for one of the top 25 bloggers. And she's an affiliate manager. She, she's an OPM, an outsource program manager that represents many advertisers. And like all OPMs and all, of, all the outsource program managers, they're looking for good affiliates. And don't be shy to approach them because they're very personable, personable people, they're very friendly. Sarah actually lives, incidentally, about five minutes from our house, which is kind of nice because most people I know in the industry live somewhere else. So we've had a chance to get to know her. And uh, that's her little baby, Haley. Just an adorable little thing. But uh, don't be shy to reach out to the affiliate managers. I know sometimes when we're getting started as new affiliates, we're a little, maybe, they, maybe we're not ready to talk to the affiliate manager. It's absolutely the first thing you should do, is start to reach out to the affiliate managers. Smarter Chaos, I mentioned earlier, Matt Frary, again, normal, regular guy, lives in Denver, wife's name's Hunter, 
all of these people we've had a chance to get to know through the, uh, through the conferences and the business, and just a great guy. And you probably find he's a very happy guy right now, so he'll probably have a smile on his face because his wife bought him a Christmas present. Check that out. So if you see Matt around, he will be uh, a very happy guy. And he's actually taking care of our affiliate program for us for the School of Internet Marketing. And just a great company. They represent over 50 different advertisers. And I would jot down smarterchaos.com. Another big thing that I'd like to recommend to you is you stop trying to do all the little odds and ends yourself if you started. I'm a big fan of outsourcing. We'll talk a little bit about a company called Elance. Elance, I was doing a talk in 2004 at Commission Junction, and I was explaining some things, and the gentleman came up to me afterwards. I just use Elance, and Elance is the, a play on the word freelance, and there's literally over two million people within the Elance system that you can post a job, and they'll come in and bid on it, whether it's graphic design, putting your site together for you, audio, video, anything you can possibly imagine, you can find people to actually take care of for you. And you'll find it's probably a fraction of what you think it'll cost to get it done. So number one, I'd recommend outsourcing the development of your website. I know a lot of us want to dig in and learn WordPress and we like to get lost in the technical details and We'll, we'll play with it for hours and really enjoy it. And it's kind of fun if you like that type of thing. But there's really no money in it unless you're a graphic designer. And this is where I always remind myself that I'm a publisher. I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not a website developer. I'm not a writer. I'm a, I'm a publisher. So in this particular case, and this is the site I'm going to use as, as an example. This is Carol Newman. And her website is BioGirl Health. It's a brand new site. And I think you'll find when we're talking about building a brand, this is a great example. We actually helped Carol design this and help her put it together. And you can see biogirlhealth.com, and she didn't put anything of this together. Number two is the graphics. You can go to Elance and post a project to get all your graphics created, and you can find very talented graphic designers who will put together a great graphics package for you inexpensively. I think if all the graphics I'm about to show you cost me somewhere around $225, and you'll find there's a lot of them, including the, including the header graphics, the Spreaker Radio graphic there, and all the graphics throughout the site. That's our Facebook graphic. So um, when we mentioned brand earlier, this is a great example of a brand. Her website, biogirlhealth.com. Her podcast is the Biogirl Health Show, and she'd never done a podcast before, and she's just getting very good at it very quickly. This is, her, again, her graphics over on her uh, Spreaker Radio uh, site. Number three, technical things like setting up your email opt-in. It's complicated, it's time consuming, and even if you're good at it, you can probably find somebody to set up your little email opt-in offer for a fraction of what you would charge yourself to do it, because you can find people overseas that'll take care of it for you very, very inexpensively. All of this frees you up to, to keep the publisher hat on, keep coordinating things so that you're moving forward and you're not doing all the work yourself. Number four is outsource the writing. And we've probably outsourced, I don't know, we have 12 writers on the go at any one time, all through the Elant system, and it's amazing. Kimberly here, who works uh, with us very carefully, she handles and manages all of our writers very, very well, and these writers are amazing. And you gotta stay on top of them, you gotta make sure you get back what, you, what you're asking for, but they can outwrite most of us, I would bet, unless you're a professional writer. And again, even if you're a professional writer, we're not in the writing business anymore, we're, we're now publishers. So you now manage writers. Number five is you can outsource video and audio. In Carol's particular case, she wanted a nice intro and a nice outro for her podcast. And she, uh, we put, helped her put that together, where when you hit the play button on her podcast, you get this wonderful intro of music, and professional voice talent, a little bit of sound effects, and the same at the end of her show, all outsourced. And then tech issues. Any problems that you have, I, I just noticed, somebody mentioned to me this morning, I actually discovered it on the way out, my site, jamesmartel.com, is down. I don't know why it's down. But when I get back to the hotel room, I'm not going to try and fix it myself. I've already got a, a guy that I work with through Elance. I'll just send him a little note, say, my site's down. Would you please take care of it, figure out why it's down, and bring it back up? 
So with that in mind, let's kind of dig into the, to the website development strategies. I'm gonna share 10 of them with you. Personally, I think these are all musts, that we really gotta do these. Number one, real simple shortcut, if you're looking for a content management system to develop your site, you can really save yourself a lot of time using WordPress. How many of you use WordPress now? Imagine a fair chunk, yeah. It's, a, it's something that we started using quite a few years ago now, couldn't live without it. I think back to the early days in 1999 when we were on dial-up using Microsoft front page to build websites <laughs> compared to where we are today. This is a, this is a dream. So definitely uh, use WordPress, of course. It's very simple. It's the WordPress core is free. They've got plugins that add extra functionality to the site. There's over 20,000 of them on WordPress.org to choose from. They're all free. And then you've got themes. Don Campbell over here from expandweb.com has got a beautiful business theme that uh, you can use to, uh, to help give your site the, the great look and the great feel. Strategy number two is build pages, not websites. If you think about it, Google doesn't rank websites. Google only ranks web pages. Nobody can look at more than one page at a time when they're browsing your site. So if we're focused on building a great page of content every time we build a page, you're gonna find you kind of can get really focused in and developing a, that great page of content. So when you're building out a page, really focus in on building a great page, and next thing you know, of course, you're gonna have a great site. Strategy number three is avoid clutter at all costs. Clutter will cost you a fortune in conversion rate. People are very easily distracted online. And when they land on your page, you want to give them, you want, you want them to do basically one thing. You don't want to give them 20 or 30 things to do. And if you fill up menus and you've got too many social media buttons and all the things that you can easily turn on on a website, you're going to find your conversion rate is going to plummet. So if, if somebody found you in the search results, or if you found this site or this page in the search results and you happen to be looking for that particular product, you'll notice instantly you know the product is there. There's no spinning, twirling, crazy things in the columns because there is no column. You scroll down the page, very focused. There's nothing on the page other than the link to the merchant who will pay the commission for that visitor who came through and made the purchase. So keep your pages very clean, neat, and tidy. Strategy number four, and I always get pushback on this, but add you to your site. In Carol's case, you can see that we've really encouraged her well to add herself to her site. And she's done a great job of it. She's in the header graphic. She's in the graphics uh, within everything to do with her, uh, her podcast. She's in the right-hand column. She's in her banner ads. She's everywhere. People don't want to deal with anonymous people. People want to buy from people that they trust. And if you take the time to really work yourself into your websites, you're going to find that people will learn to trust you. And when they see your brand and when they see your smiling face, They'll make some, even subconsciously, they'll realize, okay, well, there's a real person behind this site. How many of you have been on a website, you have no idea who's behind it? We don't normally buy from those types of sites. We want to know who we're, uh, who we're dealing with here. Strategy number five is to organize yourself a publishing schedule. You want to figure out in advance what you're going to be writing about. You don't want to worry about today what you're going to write about today. You should have figured that out two months ago. So in the case of the BioGirl Health Show, or the BioGirl.com website, if you scroll down the page on her site, you'll find she's got how-to guides, where she writes basic little tutorials, usually 700, 800, 900 words in length. And she's got a blog, where she's more free-flowing and talking about things that uh, really are interesting to her that she thinks will be very interesting to her visitors. And she's got this mapped out all in advance. She's basically got about six months of content already planned to, uh, to be added to this website. One how-to guide per week, one blog post per week, and then she also has her podcast has now been launched in the last, uh, what's today, the 11th, 12th? It launched on the, on the 1st. So then there will be her podcast page on the site. So she's got a plan for three pages of content per week. Little how-to guide a blog post slash article, and then a descriptive article for the podcast she did for that week. So she's got a very good solid content plan in place. And part of this content will of course be pushed out 
through uh, social media, which we'll talk about. Strategy number six, and probably the biggest thing that I could share with you today, that I'll probably get the biggest pushback from many of you on, is you should start your own podcast. We've been podcasting as we started at the top for over 10 years. It's the most amazing experience that we've had in the business. It's probably the reason we're still here by far. It's the best way for your visitors to get to know who you are. They'll quickly discover what you're about. There's nothing more powerful than the human voice. You can get them into a rhythm where they'll come back every time you publish a new show. So if you've got a weekly show, that gives you a good opportunity to bring them back over and over again. Because one of the strategies you want to really think about, it's one thing to get the visitors to your site once, but how are we going to get them to come, how are we going to get them to come back over and over and over again? This, to me, is the best way. And we've proved it over the years. We've, my podcast has been played millions of times. Arlene's got a little podcast on a website called epilepsymoms.com. And she only published six of them because that's all she wanted to do. And she published them in 2009, interviewing doctors who helped our son become seizure-free. And that, those podcasts alone have been downloaded over 100,000 times. All of us, how many have an MP3 player in their pocket or a smartphone, smart device? Just about everybody. We can play the audios on our, on our computers, and people are doing it all over the world. So definitely think about a podcast. The other thing about a podcast is you can easily syndicate it. That little orange button that you see next to Carol's face is an RSS feed. And you could take that little URL, it's just a simple little address, and you can go find 20 or 30 little podcast directories, and you can drop that little URL into a field on their website and hit submit. Now every time you publish a new podcast, every one of those websites gets updated automatically. It's the most amazing thing. Every one of those other websites have traffic of their own. If you take a look at Carol's show, it came out on the first, and she's already up to around seven or eight hundred listeners in ten days, just from the traffic alone from the buy, or from uh, Spreaker360.com. And strategy number seven is to automate everything you can, within reason. You want to automate the invitation of your listeners or your visitors to come back to your site through services like that RSS feed, where. Uh, oh, sorry, within the speaker site, there's a little follow button. So every time a new podcast is published, everybody gets invited back to come listen to the podcast. In the case of the Aweber newsletters, you can set them up in such a way that every time you publish a new blog post, or every week, it'll gather up all the content from your site, and it'll automatically turn it into a little newsletter, and it'll email all of your subscribers automatically. Strategy number eight is spend, spend the money on the graphics. Really find a great graphic designer that gets it, that understands good design and good layout. Strategy number nine is fresh content. Visitors love fresh content, that's why they're there. Google loves fresh content. You need fresh content to be distributing through the social media networks when you're building your audiences there. So developing, this kind of goes back to the publishing schedule is to get into a rhythm of adding content. Remember, we're publishers here, we're publishers. Strategy number 10 was to syndicate, whether it be your podcast or your blog, through other sites. Sean Collins from Affiliate Summit, one of the co-founders, you may have saw him up front here earlier, and if you're in the newcomer session, he's a master at syndicating his content. You'll find it everywhere. So with that in mind, with the content being built, the website looking great, we're using WordPress, we got great graphics, we got great content coming in, we probably hired a writer or two to give us a hand. A typical, just for the record, seven, eight hundred word blog post that's really well written, around 15 to 20 bucks. So we're not talking breaking the bank here. So with all of this in mind, how are we gonna bring in the traffic? Strategy number one is your email newsletter list. Again, it's one thing to get them to the site, it's a whole other thing to bring them back. And you do that through an email newsletter of some sort. It could be a podcast that brings them back, or an email, I suggest both. So number one is email. Number two is YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine on the planet now. Bing and Yahoo pale in comparison to YouTube combined. 
and it's pretty darn easy to get highly ranked within YouTube if you lay things out properly and you write great titles and you add a descriptive text at the bottom. Most YouTube videos, they don't take any time to write the description when they publish the video. YouTube uses a lot of that rich detail that you include below the video to determine where it should be ranking within the YouTube system. If you set things up properly, your YouTube video can also rank. You've seen the, you've seen the videos in the Google results? That's where they're drawing it from, of course, is YouTube. Strategy number three is press releases. PRweb.com, you should make a note of that. There's a lot of cheesy press release services out there that can honestly get you into trouble. There are more article directories in disguise. This is a very legitimate one. This, in this example, this is Arlene putting up when she first launched epilepsymoms.com. She wanted to get the word out about her podcast and about the interview she was doing with one of the doctors. So she put out a little press release in PR web. And that about filled up half a room. About 50 people in the online, it was a conference line I believe. <clears throat> the other thing she did is she took that press release that she had written by a professional at Elance who writes press releases for a living. It cost her about a hundred bucks to have that press release written. She took that same press release, she packaged it up, put a couple other little things that she had, pasted, put it in the envelopes, put the little sticker on there, hand wrote it to all the local newspapers and radio stations. And within a day, we had a reporter sitting at our kitchen table interviewing Arlene and our son Adam. And Arlene's book's called Getting Adam Back, A Mother's Triumph Over Epilepsy and Autism. And this, they gave us the front page of the newspaper, a whole page inside, and then another third of a page as well. And this filled up the rest of her room. So she's got a great message to get out. This was amazing, and it was all because of press releases. Strategy number four is natural search. Of course, primarily Google. They're the only ones I really particularly care about. And that's where we've built our living over the years is learning how to get highly ranked within Google. And Google is still the 800-pound gorilla in the room in many cases, and they're a dynamite source for, for traffic. Strategy number five is Facebook. And Stephanie Lichtenstein is here, and she's doing a session at 2 o'clock and I don't know what it's called. Do you, do you know what it's called? She's amazing when it comes to Facebook. And if you get a chance to go sit in with her, and she makes it simple, and she clears away the clutter. Because Facebook is something that can really help boost your business. There's, of course, a tremendous audience there. I've never really been much into Facebook, I'll say, until most recently since meeting Steph has helped me a lot at getting things organized and understanding how it works and where I'm not having to waste my time and I don't have a lot of time for this and that. She got that all sorted out for us. So if you get a chance, go in and have a listen to her at uh, 2 o'clock. There's Carol's Facebook page, by the way. Again, strategy number six, I'd carve this one in stone, podcasting. Even if you're a little bit nervous, you don't know how to do it, don't worry about that. <coughs> Excuse me, one thing I always tell my students at the boot camp, don't worry about technical things or how this is going to happen. Don't worry about We'll figure out that as we go. I want you to think more about, be creative. Of how, what, what do we want to do? How are we going to serve our visitors? And how are we really going to get this done? The technical stuff is easy because we're going to outsource it all to somebody at Elon's. So with this in mind, 12 tips to get you on the fast track. Tip number one is truly decide what business you're in. Be very careful. If you want to be a writer and you're a great writer and you want to learn writing, it's a, great, it's a great career choice from what I understand. If you want to be a graphic designer and, or you are a graphic designer and that's your forte, then that's a great place to be. If you love the, all things technical and you want to be a technical support uh, person like we've got who are, was going to bring my site back up shortly here, uh, definitely uh, do that because great, great careers. Affiliate marketing, publishing, is what we particularly do, and I think it's what most of you are interested in learning how to do, and managing all of this. Because it is the way to make money. It's not doing the work yourself. And I do realize there's budgets in place, and some of this you're going to do it yourself. I do also have another saying, is do what you do best and outsource the rest. So pick the few little areas that you're good at. But generally speaking, you want to be outsourcing pretty much everything. I don't do anything anymore. I've been outsourcing for seven, eight years now. And that's all I do is outsource. 
So pick what business you're in. If, if you're going to be publishers, there's a whole other skill set there that needs to be honed. So tip number two is learn how to outsource. How many of you haven't heard of Elance? Okay, terrific. How many of you have heard of Elance and are not really using it effectively yet? Okay. So with that in mind, tip number three is to build yourself a virtual team, especially even if you're really getting just started. There's only a handful of disciplines that you need. You need a graphic designer. You need somebody who's going to help you with the tech support. You will need somebody who is probably going to help you with some audio. And all of the other little bits and pieces, you'll find people within the Elon system easily. And you may not find the, the right person right off the bat, but once you work with a few of them, you're going to find your favorites. We've got a handful of writers that have been with us for over a year, some of them, some of them longer. But we can, we can rely on them, we can fall back on them whenever we need them. Tip number four is find a great affiliate manager. And this is really important. I would really be all over this while you guys are here, is to go find a Sarah Bundy or a Matt Frary or uh, you know any one of the dozens and dozens of great ones that are here. Tip number five, and I live and die by this, is the 15 minute rule. And how many of you ever found yourself doing this? Something's broken, it won't fix, you can't figure it out. I had one of our boot camp members named Jay Schwa, he lives in Vancouver, funny guy. He's working on a problem, I don't even remember what it was, but it was something that was broken on his site and he's trying to fix it. He spent all afternoon working on it. Then he came in, we do a twice monthly live Q&A, he comes into the live Q&A and he's asking, we're all trying to help him fix and sort this thing out. So now he's on it to about four or five hours. Next day, he's in the chat form, trying to figure out some help. And then it just kind of dawned on me. Jay, have you tried outsourcing this? No, I haven't, James. Well, go post a project at Elance and see what happens. He came back to us the next day. He hired a guy for $12 who fixed it in like five minutes, and it was done. So he wasted the whole afternoon. He was in the conference room, and we love him. It's, it's fun. And then he's in the chat form. But he spent hours and hours and hours when he could have just outsourced it to somebody for 5, 10, 15, 20 bucks and get it sorted out. So the 15 minute rule is basically this. If I can't fix it in 15 minutes, I take the next 15 minutes and I outsource it. I post a little project. It's as simple as writing an email. Subject line, jamesmartell.com is down. Hi, it's James here. My website is down. I'm not quite as sure why. I'm looking for somebody who can come along right now and sort out the details and get the site back online. You'll find within 20 minutes, you'll have 15, 20 people from all over the world coming to bid on that. Say, hey, I'll, I'll sort it out for 20 bucks. Boom, it's done. Tip number six is become a student again, oh, which obviously you, all, you are, you're all here. And you're gonna be seeing some great sessions this afternoon and tomorrow and Tuesday. And I highly recommend learning the various areas of the business. Take them one at a time. Don't try to eat the elephant all in one bite, as they say. Go through it methodically and logically. You're looking to get a plan in place. Find good mentors, and this would fall under the affiliate manager category as well. We can learn a lot from people who've been here before us. So there's no reason to make a whole bunch of mistakes and try to hack your way through this on your own. There's lots of people that'll help you. You're going to find rooms full of them over the next couple of three days here. So definitely take some time to learn uh, who they are. Tip number eight, shameless plug time. Stay up to date. If you'd like, we invite you to subscribe to the Affiliate Buzz podcast on Spreaker.com. It's a once a week show. Tip number nine is track and measure everything. The beautiful thing about the internet is you can track and measure everything. You want to learn how to use tools such as Google Analytics, Google Website Optimizer, which is now part of analytics, and various uh, you know, tools like that, clicktail.com, just some great tools. What's our time running? Tip number 10, work hard and play hard. This is the one I always get shot on. This is my wife, Arlene. 
we do work our butts off, I'll tell you, even today, but we like it. It's fun. We work at home. And, but we do also believe in working hard and playing hard. And here's Arlene on a cruise not too long ago on her brother's 50th birthday, if I recall. And just having a nice time. And then one thing about cruise ships, which we've done a fair bit of, is they have the most wonderful internet cafes. They want all your money to use them. So you need to get efficient, and you need to learn how to outsource, and you need to learn how to just kind of manage it, because you definitely don't want to be doing the work at $24 an hour in front of one of those things. But it's a great place to be out on a cruise ship. I remember the first time we did this, we were some 700 nautical miles off the coast of Florida, somewhere down in the, way down in the uh, Eastern Caribbean, playing on the internet, working on our business. That was life changing. It was like, this is very cool. So, but it's very expensive, so you want to make sure the money's coming in. Tip number 11 is no hocus pocus, just focus. And it truly is, you're going to find this is the most distracting business on the planet. The kind of the joke is affiliates are very easily distracted by shiny things. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be trying, there, it's, you're going to be attempted to be taken off track many, many times. And I heard an analogy yesterday, I thought it was great. He says, every time you take a wrong turn and you go five miles, you actually lose 15 miles. So if you're, if you're going from here and your destination is there, and you get taken off track by a little course you just spotted or this latest, greatest gimmick to make money online, and we've all seen them, you head down that road five miles, and it's taken you off where you're going, building your publishing company, your, your home-based home -based publishing company. You go there five miles, so it takes five miles to get there, five miles to get back, and then five miles to get where you would have been if you just would have stayed on the path. So be very careful you don't get taken off track all the time because you're never going to get there. You want to make sure you know where you're going. So no hocus pocus, just focus. And number 12 is give yourself some time to succeed. It's going to take some time to learn this. Uh, I think you're going to find it the most rewarding learning that you're going to do. You're going to meet great people in these conferences. We've I don't know how many hundreds of people we know here right now today, but it's all because of giving ourselves the time to succeed. So just one quick thing before we open it up to a live Q&A. We just literally are launching the School of Internet Marketing today. And it is an outgrowth of our Affiliate Marketers Boot Camp, which was uh, an evolution of the Affiliate Marketers Handbook that I wrote in 2002. We're loaded up with courses. Many of the instructors we talked about today are here. And within the course, they've created great little courses. My boot camp, we're kicking off on January the 29th. You'll find it's fully detailed in everything we talked about today, step by step, one piece at a time. Everything's video based with live Q and A's, lots of personal live interaction in our conference room. All kinds of other courses that will support the boot camp are available within the system, including Stephanie's Facebook 101 course, Don Campbell's How to Build Your Website course, and the, the cost of it is $47 a month, all courses, for all courses, all courses and all interviews is just $47 a month. So it's very inexpensive, great way to get started if you want to learn, uh, if you really want to get on a little bit of the fast track here. If uh, you would give Arlene your business card before you go, we're going to draw for two complimentary annual passes to the boot camp, and we'll be drawing those when we get home. And then if you don't mind, we'll also subscribe you to our uh, Affiliate Buzz podcast for doing that. So let's open this up to a, to a Q&A. So anybody got some questions out there? Do we want to use the mic or are we just... Mic, okay. And if you have any questions, maybe you just want to come up behind them there. We've got 15 minutes for Q&A. So uh, let her rip. Hello. Um, you didn't talk much about uh, web hosting, dedicated servers or shared servers. What do you recommend as far as starting out? To start out, we use Bluehost. 
what I recommend is using Bluehost. Once your site gets to a point where you need to grow it into a dedicated server, then I would have it moved at that point. Okay. But I love Bluehost because they offer 24-7 North American customer support. They answer the phone usually within a minute or two. They never make you feel dumb. So you give them a phone call, even if you don't know anything, they'll, they'll take the time to work with you. They never seem to be in a rush to get you off the phone, which I truly appreciate. And they, they seem to stick with it until whatever the problem is you're having, they get solved. So that's, that's what I would start with. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, question, uh, if I or someone has an idea for an affiliate site and we figure out that to get the content written and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, say it's going to cost, I don't know, $2,000 or $3,000 to get this thing up and running. How, is there any way in advance to make some kind of prediction as to how profitable it's going to be, whether this makes sense at all before you dump the two or three grand into it and find it's only making $3 a month? I mean, you know, and it just didn't pan out. That's a great question. It's a great question. And, you know, it's it kind of, re the answer is yes and no. It's in a lot of ways, it's kind of like Hollywood is with their movies. They'll spend millions on a movie and sometimes it'll just go up. And away it goes. Other times, it down she goes. So if you take those seven tips on choosing profitable products, that'll really help. And then if you remember thinking pages, not websites, so you've got a single page of content that's focused on marketing one merchant, one, sorry, one product of a merchant, maybe it's something like the Bose radio, and that's what you're working on. Now you dote over that page. You bring in the traffic, the best traffic you can to it through Google Natural Search and Facebook and various things. And then you measure what they're doing. And then you need to figure out, what's my conversion rate? So if, if you're earning $35 per sale off every sale that comes through that page, and it takes you 200 visitors to get one sale, then you know you got a half a percent conversion rate. So then you can work on that. And you can use tools such as Clicktail and tools to see what your visitors are doing when they get to that page, and you'll be amazed. Clicktail is amazing because what it does is it gives you a video of exactly what your visitors are doing when they get to your page. They actually video them within the screen. So you see their mouse moving around. You'll see them clicking on things you can't click on. All, it's amazing what they do. So then you can start to fix that, start plugging the holes. So now let's say you can work your way, you get your conversion up to 1%. Well, now for every uh, 200 visitors, you're getting two sales. So then maybe you keep working on it and you can get up to, uh, maybe you can double your conversion rate again and get up to maybe a 2% conversion rate. And now you just need to build your traffic and really watch your traffic. Because if you're, let's say you're converting at 2% on, on, 100, on 100 visitors, that's two sales, that's $70 per 100. Now you know if I can get 200 of the same type of visitors, I'll probably get four sales. So then you can start to kind of do the math on it. And then you get that page set, working real well for you. And then when you're happy with it and you don't think you can improve it, then you can move on to another page and build another product next to that one. And then you just kind of work your way through it. Where people go wrong is they just start throwing content on their site and they just build it and build it and build it. And they don't measure and track anything and they're just writing and writing and they're not really measuring. And you'll find as you listen to the sessions, you're going to hear analytics a lot, track and measure everything. Thank you. You're welcome. Could you repeat the name of the company that you were, you were talking about? I couldn't hear it. Click tail. Click, like click. It's like the tail of the click. It's like, you know, you're watching what they're doing. Click tail. Yeah, this is a kind of elementary question. Um, when you were doing the Bio Girl site, mm -hmm. how did you come up with that look and feel? I mean, I, I understand you hired the graphic designer, the writer, and all that stuff, but how did you come up with the look and feel of the website? Because I've done some outsourcing, and, my, and the hardest thing is, what the heck do I tell them to do? Because all there was, they, they come up with all this stuff that makes no sense to me yep, at all yep. and then you got to end up paying them so can you tell us how how to go through that process well first thing the beautiful thing about elance is you don't have to pay anybody until you're ha absolutely happy with the work so all the money goes into escrow when you're when you're done and you're happy then you can release it so now how do we get the great graphics this is and it's a really good question because this is where I used to fight this a little bit. I used to over design my work orders for the graphic designer, telling them a little bit too much about what I wanted. And I'd end up getting more of a rendition of what I wanted. And I'm not a graphic designer, 
back from them and I'd be like, then I'd be back and forth trying to tweak it and it's just like it's a mess. The difference is you find a graphic designer that gets it, that understands good design. And what I do is I give them a work order that will give them, you see there's all kinds of graphics, there's about 15 graphics in that package. Every one of them is a different dimension. Every one of them will have different words on the page. Some of it's the same, but sometimes the graphic will be this big, other times it's this big, so you can have to reduce some of the text, otherwise they can't read it. So then I give it to the designer, and it comes back to me, and it's like, whoa, this is awesome. And if it's not, and it's so far away from where I want it to be, then I will actually nicely cancel out of the project and wait till I find the one that can do it. And then when I got the right person, then I just keep her. Do, do you look for like a website that you like beforehand or? That's very helpful. Yeah, that's helpful. That's very helpful. Okay. So, so start In fact, we just there. did a bunch of banner ads up for the school. They came back to me from my, my good guy and they weren't really what I wanted. And that's exactly what I did. I went up and found some banner ads that I liked. And I said, this is more of the quality I'm looking for. And then they came back and now they're great. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Can you talk about working with affiliate managers? Um, don't they normally work with a certain network or group of products? So would working with just one manager kind of limit you? Or how do you, do you work with multiple affiliate managers generally? You, you probably grow into multiple affiliate managers. But I would suggest if you're just getting started, you find one. And then when you finally get the product and you feel the manager that, that you like, then you'll probably be able to run with it like that. And then if you do want more products and they don't have it, then you can venture out and find other affiliate managers. So would you need to find an affiliate manager that has a lot of products in your specific niche? Or was, I guess I'm still concerned about they might not have the right products for my... Um, so do you have a particular type of product in mind now? Yeah, it's kind of in the baby healthcare niche. Okay, so I would be looking for merchants and affiliate managers that have specialized in that. Okay. And you'll see a bunch of them in there when you okay. get out into the meat market. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I got a question in regards to cash flow management. Um, if you sell products, you convert, how long does it take to collect um, from the advertisers, so to speak? From the, okay, good, another great question. So typically, it, it's usually a rolling month, so everything that close, they'll have a closing day. So all the business that we've referred to them that comes in on by the 30th for, say, the month of January 31st, month of January, will typically, and it, it varies depending on the merchant, but typically 45 days later. They pay about 45 days? Yeah. Okay. And that gives them time for refunds and to get their paperwork and get paid. So it's usually the first payment is the 45, then it's just monthly after that because you've got that. So you have about a 60-day sales cycle, 15 days to drive traffic, 45 days to collect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello, my name is uh, Dan Maddox. I'm Director of Online Marketing for Driver's Ed. I'm constantly looking for ways to improve uh, some of my employees. This is a uh, two-year internet school of marketing. Uh, how long is it, and is it continually updated? For, for content? For, for the boot camp? Right. The boot camp is 14 lessons, one a week. It's uh, approximately 50 to 60 minutes per lesson with homework. Okay, so it goes into the nuts and bolts pretty good is what I'm asking. Yeah, it, it'll, t it'll take you to build a site that looks like that, very similar to that. Mm -hmm. By the time you're done, you'll have, and that RC site that I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. that was one of the students that built that site out during a boot camp. All right, thank and you And then much. if you want to add the podcasting on it, and again, it's no additional cost for the next course, so you can go do Facebook, or you can go do podcasting, then you come do the podcasting course, which I'm going to do in March. Then you can uh, layer on, because with Carol's site, we built her site out first. Then we did the, fa the social media, we've got Facebook, everything set up, and then we laid the podcast throughout it all. Yeah, I've discovered it, uh, that no matter how good you get, it always uh, helps to go back and review the basics. So. Yes, thank you. Hi, James. Um, one of your strategies uh, where you mentioned adding you um, to your website, mm -hmm. uh, any ideas uh, when you're working with multiple sites in multiple verticals, um, hiring maybe a, a spokesperson or something for your mm -hmm. site? It's a, with Google today, they've got a new tool out there called Google Authorship Markup, where you're probably starting to see the little faces showing up, the author next to the search results. That's the Google Authorship Markup, which means they're looking for the credibility of the writer and they're starting to rank, just like they rank web pages, they're gonna rank authors right. over time. 
So what you could do is go to Elance and find a reputable writer and put them in charge of the content for that site. Okay. Because then you could piggyback off their author rank and you could give, get their bio in there, connect them into Google Plus and get that all set up. And then it's legitimate. It's right. not some fake person okay. and somebody that's already got credibility in the eyes of Google that's building. And that would be a great way to go. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Afternoon. Um, or good morning. I'm not used to the, 11 a.m. On a, on a Sunday morning is the middle of the night for affiliates, too, by the way. <laughs> um, you said, uh, sorry, you said one of your uh, um, traffic building strategies is to, through press releases. So I was just wondering if you knew any other publishers like PR Web that are that good. Sorry, like which? PR Web. Uh, I don't. No. I don't. I, I'm sure they're out there, and in fact, there, I do know there's another one that's much more expensive. Okay. But not that comes to mind. Do you have any idea when it, where I can look for the info, or if you know somebody here that? Uh, so do you have any idea where I can look for that info? Sorry. Yeah, if you know. PR News Slash. Somebody said. PR News Wire. Okay. Is it the one that is like a thousand dollar per press release? Half of that. Can you just say it again, please? Thank you. You're welcome. You. PR Leap, L E A P. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. All right, so uh, again, thank you everyone. If you want to give Arlene your business card, we'll put you in for the draw for sure. And uh, thank you very much. Enjoy your time at Summit.